Okay, day one. So just starting out, still at my house. Just trying to get on the road here. All right, so we're headed out of the mountains. So I live in the San Jacinto Mountains of Southern California. So what you see up there is San Gorgonio Mountain. And we're heading down into the Banning Pass because I've got to go through the desert for quite a number of hours. Actually, pretty much going to be in a desert all day. Beautiful, beautiful sky this morning. Beautiful views, clear air. Halfway through the first day, I am in the Mojave National Preserve. You can see beautiful rock formations behind me. Yeah, I'm hoping to have time. To, I stopped at Joshua Tree National Park this morning. Uh, I'm hoping to have time to go through Death Valley on my way to Beatty, but I'll have to see when I get to Shoshone. Anyway, we'll catch you guys later. Okay, good morning on day two. There's a wild burrows there. Okay, so this is the entrance to Titus Canyon. You start out on kind of this long, flat dirt road. Here we go. This is kind of where it starts to get pretty. You can see the road wanders up through these beautiful, colorful canyons. My bike's finally getting some dirt on it. I gotta drop my tire pressure. It's just, I'm getting beat to hell on these washboards. So now it's getting a little more interesting. See, we drop into this canyon. You see how the terrain is? I would say it's definitely big bike friendly. I mean, there's, there's going to be some sand towards the end going through the wash. We'll see how we deal with that. Cause, but man, look at this scenery. It's just, inc just incredible stuff. So I've probably ridden through here five or six times, uh, but always in the winter. This is my first time coming through in the fall. Oh, that's that's really beautiful. Okay. Wow, that's really something. Oh. So we're still not in the main, most dramatic part of the canyon, but we're working our way down that direction. I've arrived at Leadfield, which is kind of your halfway point through Titus Canyon. Here's what the sign says. This is how it used to look. I can't believe it used to look like that. That's crazy. Okay, here we go, boys and girls. It's the part of the show that everybody signed up for. So dramatic. Got to be a little careful because uh, the road can start to get a little sandy here. It is Tuesday, middle of the week, so most people are at their are at work, and I'm at work too. I'm making videos, right? So yeah, this is my office for the day. The trail's gotten pretty loose and sandy, so the bike wants to get into kind of a, a wobble, like a wave back and forth. And the way I'm dealing with it is just trying to let be loose, you know, loosen up the controls, 
just let it let it crack let it wobble a bit and don't fight it look at the look at the rocks the geology that's really impressive i gotta take another picture oh yeah this gravel's pretty deep here look at how the rocks folded like that it's so pretty This is a very cool part of the canyon right here. Oh, I love that angle there with the road and the bike. That's cool. Ah, uh, look at that. That's kind of a cool, it's not really a cave, but you know what I mean. That's pretty cool there. Those hikers mean that we must be near the, uh, the end of the canyon where it dumps out. There's, oh, this is crazy. Part of Titus Canyon, starting to warm up, starting to feel the Death Valley heat again. <laughs> this morning started off really cool, but it's getting hot now, but... I mean, the scenery is amazing. Let me flip around. I mean, it's truly, it's just so incredible through here. I never get tired of coming through Titus Canyon. It's just so beautiful and it's so quiet. Yeah, there she is. Coming out into Death Valley, into the actual, oh, it looks like it's windy. Look at all that dust blowing, jeez. So I'm in the Last Chance Mountains of the uh, very northern part of Death Valley National Park. Okay, so I'm on Big Pine Death Valley Road, kind of in my last part of the second day of my trip. Okay, we're about to start uh, Wakoba Saline Road or North Pass down into Saline Valley and then over South Pass. So this is the road that a lot of people would use to access the Saline Valley Hot Springs, which is kind of a famous clothing optional hot spring. 
The scenery is already really beautiful looking down into these valleys. So I'm officially in the National Park now, about 10 miles down this dirt road maybe, and past the National Park sign about a mile ago, there's these old ruins of like this old little mining area or something. I don't know what they were trying to mine here, but... Ahead of me there at my 11 o'clock, that's Saline Valley, uh, home of the famous Saline Hot Springs. Had to open up all my vents, so my jacket's starting to get a little bit warm. A few potholes here and there, which will make you pucker up a little bit if you're going too fast. But Okay, we're in the heart of Saline Valley now, and the washboards have gotten terrible on this road. It's just like, you have to go about 45 to get on top of the washboards. The sand dunes over there are beautiful. I don't know if those are called the Saline Valley dunes or what, but they're really pretty. I've gotta remember to enjoy the scenery, look up at the beautiful mountains that ring this valley, the beautiful sand dunes. So if you see those mountains up there, uh, Cerro Gordo, if you've heard of that, is up on the other side of those mountains and you can't really see it from here but the top of the salt tram is up there and uh, this lake over here, I guess saline, dry lake or whatever, um, they used to, uh, you know, uh, mine salt out of it and carry it, <coughs> excuse me, carry it across this valley and they took it up over these mountains on this these this tramway and i've actually been to the top uh you can visit the old salt tram um, station at the top it's a really awesome place to visit uh if you're going up in the cerro gordo area in fact yeah this is it right in here um you can see the, the old uh, support pylons and stuff out there here it is Bringing salt to the table. See, I'm telling you, I wasn't lying. So it says, designed to be the steepest tramway in the U.S. and recognized as an engineering marvel, the Saline Valley Salt Tram ascends 7,600 feet up the eastern slope of the Inyo Mountains. That would be those beautiful mountains right there. And it descends 5,100 feet to the Owens Valley on the other side. White Smith, an attorney and bishop, and his brothers decided to build the 13.4 mile tramway to ship the unusually pure salt from Saline Valley to California market. Look at that photo, that's incredible. So I'm riding through this like alluvial fan kind of a deal. The riding's definitely getting more, more interesting with all these rocks embedded here. Uh, come on. My hands are like turning to jello. They're like numb from all the vibration, but, but we are gaining elevation and it's finally cooling down. So I don't feel like I'm roasting to death while being vibrated to death at the same time. But All right, well, we're out of Saline Valley. <coughs> That's the way I came from. This is a little junction between Saline Valley, Hunter Mountain and uh, South Pass, or which goes over to Highway 190. So down there are the Panamint, uh, dunes and Panamint Valley and uh, yeah so that's where I'm headed next. Yeah. 